Welcome back. Serving up growth. My next guest says regulations have stifled business in the restaurant business, but he believes business will get a boost under a Trump administration. We want to bring in right now Willie Deagle. He's founder and CEO of Uncle Jack's Steakhouse and a former Food Network star. Willie, good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, you're the nice steak doctor, aren't you? Yes. Okay, we're going to talk about <laughs> steak in a second. Steak. But, but let's, let, let's talk about regulatory uh, yeah. burdens. What were the most onerous in your view? And, well, and, and what do you think changes? Well, the labor increases, they've been hitting us every year on them. Then the Department of Health has become like the FBI, like a tax Asian type bureaucratic agency that they come to us, no matter what, they got to find us. So it's all the system now. So we were employing so many people, everybody saw those numbers. So now they're looking at us to try and make fees. And I just think local city, state, and government is trying to employ too many people when it should be the empowering people like me, entrepreneurs should be employing. Of people. course. And then there's Obamacare. Yes. That's hot, tough, more paperwork. So I need a full time lawyer. I need all these admin people before I could even service. Yeah. Steak or make a drink today. What's the biggest problem? Is it is it not you know if regulations are removed, we have to hire more people, higher wages, lower prices, or just able to do more because you're not having to fill out so much paperwork and handle well, so much. Well, administratively, it's a high cost. It's mm -hmm. a lot of work. You have to have your paperwork in order, or you're going to get trouble. You're going to get fines. You're going to get lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So if one thing is out of order, you're responsible for a federal lawsuit that could go back six years. So the paperwork, just to hire someone new, it takes two inches of paperwork. Mm -hmm. We got to sign it. We got to update it. It's changing all the time. Where do you get this information? Who knows about these laws? You've got to be on it every minute. Wow. Where, where is it mainly coming from? Is it federal or state and local? It's you both. Oh, really? Yeah. So I believe when Obama came in, it's no different than a solar energy. It all trickled down. If you believed in his beliefs, then locally you implemented it quicker and faster. I'm building a restaurant in Astoria, Queens. We ripped up the basement. I'm digging down two feet, underpinning. The cement floor in the basement where I'm going to have walk-in boxes and ice machines has to have an R energy rating of 10 to 12. So we have to put in extra concrete, extra insulation in the dirt. That's wow. such a great and example. Wow. That's such That's a good really example. Helpful. So, and <laughs> restaurant, <laughs> restaurants already have such a tight, tight margin, so it's impossible to avoid passing some of these costs along to the consumer. I'm sure you try your best, yes. but ultimately that's who suffers yeah. from a lot of these. Well, if you look at everybody's ideology, whatever they say, they're like, oh, the customer will slowly pay, but how fast can I keep raising the steaks, right? Yeah. yeah. The steak meat's expensive. So how much can I transfer to the customer? So I even try tweaking my bread. People complain, $5, I'm not paying for bread. I go to Europe, you pay for bread, you pay for butter, and everybody over there begs for tips, but they only make $15, $17 an hour. Right. Here at a steakhouse, a high end, I employ a lot of people, almost 300 people today. So my staff, a front house waiter, makes $15 to $1,700 a week. He's not worried about the $750 I have to pay him an hour now, mm. and in two years it's going to $10 an hour. Yeah. I'm gonna have to pay them $400 just to show up. But this is a really important point that you're making. Because of the regulation, because of you being forced to raise wages and being forced to do all of this administrative work, that's going to dictate your behavior. You may not hire the, the number of people that you really need. Well, you may cut you, jobs let me tell you or raise to. prices. Yeah, this year, the minimum wage for front of house staff, which is 75% of employees, we were paying them $5 an hour. They said we got to give them $750. I had a front waiter a back waiter, a busboy for every five tables. I cut the busboy position this year. And that only saved 30% of the increases of the 350000 it was going to cost me. So I'm eating that right now. I couldn't transfer that to the customer by raising prices because a lot of people aren't going to high-end restaurants and celebrating as much. So the whole idea of capitalism and the way we act in America and like I talk about MTV Cribs, if you put that on TV today, I think everybody would pick it outside your house and say, you have too much <laughs> Nice stuff. Yeah. You don't deserve it. What a great illustration, though, of how regressive some of these things like the minimum wage actually are. They ultimately hurt the worker who needs oh, the wage yes. the most. And you're, no one's asking their opinion. It's just going generalized, like you go to McDonald's. What I always felt is, as a country, we should have three minimum wages. You're a publicly traded company. You're paying dividends. You're doing well. Maybe you should have a higher minimum wage. Then if you're a private health company and you're doing $50 million a year earnings, you have another minimum wage. Yeah. Then me, who I'm trying to get to 50 million, let me get there, then at 50, I want to go public. 
and it's okay. We all reap in it, and that's how it should work. But if you just do it all overall across blanket, the board, blanket, yeah. But then the other aspect yeah. of it is the taxes. It's the wages, and, the, and so you're forcing the wages up, but also taxing the more. So the take-home pay is still well. When you hire somebody, thing, it's just a mess. But you this, hire a manager for a hundred thousand a year. Does that discourage you from maybe giving someone a chance entry level with less experience, hiring someone like that? We're, we're looking at everything. I mean, I have three managers run each restaurant. Now the managers are making less than the waiters, mm. so they're revolting. You have to. Now you the front of the house the staff. The reality are that you face. The front of the house staff, when they get fifteen dollars an hour, and someone who washes dishes gets fifteen dollars an hour, my broiler guy makes twenty now. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to want thirty. All right, mm -hmm. Willie. Before you go, uh, most important question: What's the best steak to order? Your well, me, steak I, doctor, give yeah. us some, give <laughs> us some my info. Fa here. My favorite cut is a boneless prime New York strip. You know, it's a wet age steak. You can't dry age it because there's no fat cap. But you do that char, two inches cut. You take mm. it out to room temperature. We do three this different it. salts Love. on it. Mm. That's my yes. favorite. So what about all these fancy things? Wagyu, Kobe. Yeah. What about those? Well, Kobe is it's all about your marbling. So if you look at a Kobe steak, it's like 50% fat compared to the meat. The Wagyu, the American Wagyu, is crossbred with our black Angus and Japanese Kobe steers. So that's another like 30% fat. So it's a great treat item. You want to try it. You want to educate your palate. You know, your palate takes time to educate things. If somebody's eat cheap meat their whole life, they don't understand the difference between a great prime dry age steak than a normal steak they might get at Applebee's. Cool. Uh, I hope you have stuff of vegetarians there as well. <laughs> Uncle Jack's founder and sure. CEO, everybody. Willie Deagle, good to see you, sir. Good. Thanks. Thank you so much.